Well, it's so great to be with you and celebrate uh, this day with you and can't wait to be outside. We've been praying for dry weather and the Lord answered our prayers, which is awesome. And we'll have uh, food and snacks. There's a little goodie bag for everybody. Uh, you can even get this commemorative sticker that you can put on your phone uh, there or put it on your bumper or wherever you want to want to go with it there. But uh, we're looking forward to hanging with you out there and getting to uh, meet with you and talk. But we want to welcome you to our uh we're back, celebration service, and mini fair. And today is a day of celebration. So uh, I'm not giving a normal message today. Instead, we're taking a Sunday to kind of tell the story of our church, to celebrate 20 years in this building, uh, and also to celebrate enduring the last 18 months of what we've been through, and then hopefully to inspire us as we move ahead together into the future. And so we're celebrating kind of those three things. 20 years in the building, it's kind of our fall launch, uh, as often in October, people start to kind of funnel back in after the summer, and also back to, you know, quote unquote, uh, normal, just meaning indoor services, no restrictions on numbers or anything else for faith gatherings. And so uh, you know, we're just celebrating those things. And we just wanted to take a day to say, we're back, Welcome back, and uh, especially to anyone we haven't seen in a long time, uh, maybe due to COVID and other factors. We're so happy that you've uh, rejoined us, and of course, if you're new or visiting, welcome. But more than anything, we're celebrating God's faithfulness and goodness to our church and the unique story that he's invited us into, uh, that we're celebrating the transformed lives and, and families of the last 20 years, which are too numerous to count, and whether you've been here just a few few weeks, few months, few years, or first time uh, here, that you are all parts of this story, and, and more importantly, that you are a part of the future and unfolding story of Oceanside Community Church, if God is calling you here. So I want to tell a little of that story this morning, focusing on those three time frames, how it began, kind of the last five or six years, and then uh, the last 18 months. And these will bring us to where we are today as a church as we look ahead to the future together. So you already received a little handout when you came in entitled uh, Our Story, and that just gives you a little bit of the historical context. I'm not going to go, we're not celebrating since the 1950s, we're just celebrating the last 20 years in this uh, building, but there, uh, there's an archive table that we'll leave out there for a few weeks, and it, if you didn't get one, you can grab one there, but that gives you a little understanding of the bigger history of our church. But I want to uh, highlight just the incredible work and, and incredible people who are in part a part of launching this new location and the almost really improbable amount of work that it took to get this off the ground, something that you and I get to be weekly and, and really daily blessed by. So in the year 2000, are we ready for baptism? Yeah. We have a class. <laughs> Any, a few years, we'll, we'll look forward to it. So in the year 2000, uh, our church, then known as Parksville Pentecostal Assembly Church, glad I don't have to say that every Sunday, moved out of the tiny downtown uh, building there, and you'll recognize that street, downtown Parksville, uh, that small little building, and purchased this property in order to be able to dream a little bigger. And, you know, this property here has and, ha and has had a fascinating history uh, it was Bird World for the longest time. Those of you who have lived in the area a long time know that. So we have this one remaining artifact in our lobby. It doesn't look like this quite anymore, although that wasn't that long ago. We still had the jungle theme and the birds. Uh, but we've left that little waterfall kind of as a uh, testimony to the past history of this building. But it was this big tourist attraction with birds, live birds in here. And uh, so we've kind of moved on from that. It was an indoor golf place right before we moved in. So there's Mulligan's Indoor Golf uh, there. I bet you didn't know that. And um, to the side, I believe it might have been sharing for a time with Indoor Golf. It was a used appliance and really, honestly, just junk area there. So you see used, you see all the junk to the side. This was like their side entrance. And that's where we're having our fair today. Um, that's what it looked like when we moved in, and that's where we met for our outdoor services during the summer. It was just, this property was just full of stuff, and, uh, but we had this amazing, beautiful group of volunteers 
who took on this project that would really end up taking uh, years. So here in the year uh, 2000, you see them. They're, they're clearing out the building. It was pretty dark in here. It had all these kind of rooms and mazes and pathways for the bird world. That's the multi-purpose room there where the kids uh, are meeting right now. And that's a part of what it looked like. And, uh, but they went to work first on that multi-purpose room. So here's them kind of cleaning that out and getting it ready. Uh, that's kind of over on that side of the building. And they wanted to have that temporary meeting space while they then worked on the rest of the building over here. And so finally on January 21st, 2001, they were ready to open in that multi-purpose room. And so there is the grand opening uh, there. And so you might recognize that as, as that room over there. There are about 70 people there that first Sunday morning to celebrate the grand opening. And uh, that first year in the building, 2001, uh, they averaged uh, 62 people that first year, which filled out that little multi-purpose room quite well. And uh, things were different back then. Uh, we don't do this anymore, uh, but maybe we'll bring it back for the 25th anniversary celebration. We had some robed choirs going on. But they were finally meeting in the building. They got to work on the outside, making sure it didn't look like a used appliance uh, store anymore. So kind of cleaned it up a little bit, got a, a sign on the wall. And uh, then eventually they got to work on this room where we're sitting uh, in the sanctuary. And so you'll see this is uh, the wall you know, behind me. It still had kind of the, the bird jungle kind of thing going on. And then you would have walked in these doors right here. And those are those doors being built back there. Uh, essentially, any wall you see that's not cement was uh, put in by the church here. And then finally, on February 20th, 2005, they met for the first time here in this sanctuary, in this room. And there's a photo of that, and that's uh, uh, Pastor Jim Caruso, who's uh, very beloved by those who were here at that time, and him preaching. And you'll see the room doesn't look like that anymore. Uh, Jim's basically standing inside this closet uh, in that room, uh, and it was kind of diagonal, and now we've kind of moved it uh, all over here. But that 2005 year was a bit of a high point uh, for the church when they moved into this sanctuary. Uh, it was really the most people they had had up until that time worshiping. Uh, they broke 100 people for the first uh, times that year. But uh, things slowly started dwindling a little bit after that. And the church ended up going through some tough times. There were quite a few pastoral transitions. Uh, for a time, there were no pastors at all. And then there were some interims. But all along, some amazing and faithful and persevering people stuck with it believing in God's plan and purpose for this church, who could see the vision ahead. There are heroes of the faith, in my opinion, uh, like these families who have been here for the whole 20-year journey and even beyond. Here's one beautiful couple, Mike and Diane, hello, over there. <laughs> They've been along for the whole journey. Uh, there's the Webb family there, and so Rio... Rio was playing drums up here this morning, little Rio, and that's him uh, about 20 years ago. And there were others, uh, Kenny and Sherry was in the 9 a.m., and uh, George has been here a long time, and, and other people as well. But these people were very influential, a lot of them were on the search committee, uh, that made it possible for Hannah and I to come in 2015. So we'll kind of tell that part of the story now, and here's a photo from our, our first uh, couple months there. Amos, our, our middle child, was born right after we got here, and this is him being dedicated by uh, Pastor Dave Monk, the interim pastor who was there. And uh, so that's an early uh, memory of us and our family from the church. And you know, those first few years, they, they were tough. Um, it was a time of testing for sure. We came, you know, really full of faith in God that he had clearly called us here. That's another story. Uh, but honestly, we had no idea how this was all going to happen. And things looked a little bit bleak on the surface. Uh, almost, hello there. Looking for popcorn again, huh? Do you have some more? <laughs> Not only baptism candidate, but future musician. I love it. I'm going to talk about kids in just a second. It's perfect. Um, 
but things were tough. They didn't always look great on the surface. I mean, almost every month in that first year here, we had at least one Sunday where we would be in the, in the low 30s uh, as far as the amount of people here, and that included our family of four at that point. Uh, three, four, five musicians maybe. You got your four or five volunteers, sound and greeters. As you can imagine, that leaves about 15 or so people left out here, which means when you started a service at 10 a.m. on some of those days, I mean, I remember some services where there were literally like five or six people when you started the service. And it was hard. Uh, It was often painful and and a little bit awkward. I wasn't sure if we were going to make it as a church, if this would work. And, you know, I often say, and I'm not exaggerating, that we really did go about 0 for our first 40 on first-time visitors as far as returning because we we just weren't ready. Uh, We were still learning kind of who we were going to be and where we were going to go and and the kind of culture we were going to create and foundation and, and finding our identity. But as some of you know, for those first few years, you know, our kids, uh, we just saw one up here, not one of mine, uh, but our kids were the only kids uh, in the church those first couple years. And so, you know, we we preached with babies strapped to our chests there like that. Uh, We prayed with kids with their heads between our legs uh, like that. And uh, don't want to leave out my third child, you know, holding them. Uh, while we went because, you know, we just kind of embraced this as our family space and there was nowhere else for them to go at that point. But we held on to the many promises and words from the Lord that were given to us before we came and and early on here that God was was going to do something big. Not for our sake, not for the sake of the church, but for his sake. He was going to expand the reach of this church and make it a center on the island for Holy Spirit transformation in people's lives. And so we prayed. We we didn't know what to do, but we prayed a lot. And we literally prayed in musicians and families. And here's kind of an early picture of some of that that, that first seed growth, uh, here's Jerry. Uh, so Jerry, who is now our music director, who you saw up here, Jerry and his family were one of the first to kind of come and when we were still kind of small and say, we see where this is going and we want to be a part of it. And you see a couple of our first families. This was our whole kids' ministry. Uh, then there's Aaron on the side who's on our council now. And these are just some of those seed families as we started to move forward. And, you know, then the Lord did things like bringing us amazing spirit-filled interns like this person there, Dia. And uh, Dia was leading our music this morning, but uh, she's held every position we've ever had at the church except lead pastor maybe. Uh, She's kind of done it all and been a part of some of the journey. And what happened is eventually we moved from no kids to a few years ago needing to hire full-time family pastors to take care of all the kids and families in the church. And there's Thomas, uh, one of our family pastors, along with his spouse, Ellie. And I don't want to leave out Ellie. I just really like this uh, picture of Thomas. Uh, But speaking of Ellie, we are celebrating 20 years this morning. And uh, good to pause, take a little break. You might be wondering, uh, you know, what's our most watched video over the last 20 years? Of course, we've only been on YouTube a few years, I guess. But, uh, you know, what's the most watched video? Is it Easter Sunday? Is it one of, you know, my many, many, many powerful, life-changing messages that I've given throughout the years? Uh, What's the... Nope. This is our most watched video of all time, or at least a clip of it. I am a servant of the Lord. My name is Mary, scheduled to marry alone in my living room and saw something scary. An angel named Gabriel said I'd have a child, a savior coming to the world. And there are more videos of Ellie rapping on our YouTube channel, so you can check it out. That's from our Stuck Inside Oceanside Christmas, which was a special Friday night uh, version or event where we picked up our appetizers here, and then we all went to our houses, and we watched it live and sent in photos and all of that. But things began to kind of take off. Uh, For example, in 2019, 
we had over 80 people go through our Alpha program here at the church, which was just a sign of, of how the Lord was moving and the transformation. And Alpha is a program for people who have questions about Christianity or are new to the faith or just want to solidify their faith more. And uh, here's one of those Alpha nights that are taking place here at the church. And we got heavily involved in the needs of our community. Uh, one of the questions when we came here was often, well, what can we do in the community? Because we weren't quite engaged yet as, as a church fully. And in 2016, almost five years ago to today, September 26, that year, uh, we launched our Arrington Elementary Breakfast Program and uh, got that going. And that's uh, something where uh, we're meeting the needs of not only the school that is closest to us as a church, but the one that has the most needs, uh, the lowest kind of income in our area. And so since that date five years ago, and I did the math this week of days and kids and breakfast, we've served, according to my math, approximately 48,000, 48 healthy breakfasts to kids in need in our local area over the last five years. And so you, the church, through your faithful giving and vision, have provided daily uh, fresh fruit vegetables, a, a protein like Greek yogurt or, or milk and, and a grain uh, every day supplied from the church for kids who we know often aren't getting uh, a healthy breakfast or any breakfast at all at home. Uh, and so we're continuing on with that even through COVID. We've worked with Island Crisis Care uh, Center and we were uh, very, we helped a lot in trying to get that supportive housing Orca Place off the ground. In fact, we did our 2019 toaster challenge, if you remember that, where uh, our church was charged with the task of providing a brand new toaster for every room and every resident in Orca Place. And you guys came through and we had this big stack and we took them down uh, to Orca Place and they were blessed by those. And this has given us so many inroads in the community through these different programs where we've been able to provide meals and Christmas gifts and all kinds of things. And so uh, as we did that, the church just began to grow. In 2018 and 19, we grew by about 50% each of those years. And in January, February, early 2020, uh, some of you were here for that time, not normally a time of great uh, necessarily growth in the church, but we just started really bursting at the seams. We were hitting close to 200 on Sundays. And we made the decision in faith that in April 2020, we would move to two services to accommodate that. And then COVID hit, and it just messed everything up. Uh, but God is faithful and good. But uh, man, that was, of course, a tough time uh, because we had just so much momentum, and uh, we were growing, we had salvations, we were at baptisms, we were seeing healings on Sunday mornings and in our prayer meetings and different things, and it kind of just all got shut down in a way, and it was fairly crushing. But you know what? We, we did what we needed to do. We met online for a while. While we could, we gathered uh, for the first time as soon as we could. We did all kinds of crazy stuff. It's like dizzying. I can't even remember what we did when, right? We, we met outdoor. We had family services where you stayed with your little family around the table. We were limited to 50 people. Remember when you had to pre-register for church? Like, was that the worst? That was awful. That was only a few months ago. Uh, we did it all. We divided the building into two separate buildings so that you could have separate entrances and exits and you could do 50 on each side. We had to have one washroom for this side and one washroom for that side, which led to an awkward moment of me and a female parishioner who remains unnamed crossing paths uh, in, the, in the washroom because he had to like knock, make sure nobody was like, we just did what we had to do to keep going. And here we are. And we just want to take a moment to say we're back and welcome back and say, well done. You persevered. We made it. You made it. And so we are not giving up. We've been resilient. We will remain resilient and we will keep going forward. And the thing that's continued to drive us back in 2015, 16, we spent really a whole year with a group of people and we uh, got feedback from the whole congregation working on our vision and our mission. And some of you are a part of that team. And we felt like it was really spirit inspired and we came up uh, kind of with this to just keep our focus that our vision, the thing we're always pressing towards but can never really reach is that we want to be a family of fully devoted children of God who are fully mature in Jesus Christ, fully alive in the Holy Spirit, living as God intends and loving as God loves. And you might say, well, that's a tough vision. We'll never get there. And that's true, but we're moving towards it. But our mission, which is what we do to kind of get towards the vision is this 
that we want to engage with the heart of God in holistic worship, meaning all of our lives. We want to edify the people of God in biblical discipleship, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week. And we want to embrace the mission of God in our community. And there's reminders of that every week that this is what we're doing. And we're going to keep going. We're still here. And I'm glad to say we're back. And we're going forward together as a church. And yeah, it's been hard. But I refuse to be shaken or distracted from what God is calling us to do. And I encourage you to do the same. And my invitation, our invitation to you is, will you come on this journey with us? Will you go forward with us in what God has? Because I believe that this church is positioned to be a life-giving force on the island for many decades to come until the Lord returns. One of Hannah and my goals since we got here was to say, we want to build something that far outlasts us, that goes way beyond us. We don't want to build something that's revolved around a few personalities or a few people, but we want it to be something that will still remain, that will keep going. And I hope you feel the same way, that we might not all be here in 20 years, right? But let's continue to build on the foundation of people like Mike and Diane and those who have been around so that we are here today. And we want that to be a part of the legacy of our lives, and I hope you feel the same way. And I'm still leaning into dreams for this church, the words that have been spoken over it, like where people will go to their doctor and the doctor will say, I don't think I can do anything for you, I don't think I can heal you, but I hear at Oceanside Community Church, there is healing, there is transformation. I'm holding on to dreams like that, that this will be a gathering spot of Holy Spirit transformation that will pull from all ends of the island. And a lot of the words we received have been this idea of coming from all four directions and the idea that we will then send them out as agents of blessing across this island and province and country. And I love this church. And it's our joy and privilege to give what Han and I believe are, are some of the best years of our lives to this church because we believe in it. We believe in its calling. We believe in what happening, a place where people can walk in and say, as we'll sing in a moment, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. So that we can have more testimonies like Jenna saying, I couldn't find what I was looking for my whole life and then found it. And Jenna went through that alpha course that we talked about. So let's sing that. Let's end this 20th celebration by, by proclaiming God's praises. Let's sing this over our own lives and families. Let's sing it over our community. And then Hannah will close us with a benediction before we go outside and celebrate. But would you stand with me and close off this 20th celebration by lifting your voice in song?